The World Poker Tour is celebrating a 19-year partnership with Bellagio, the place where the very first WPT tournament was ever held, and it still holds its prestigious reputation on the WPT today. So join me as I chat with some of our previous winners of the WPT Five Diamond World Poker Classic to reminisce over one of the biggest wins of their lives. Dylan Lind, you won back in 2000, uh, December 2018 for $1.6 million. Uh, James Romero won in December 2016 for $1.9 million. Your largest scores still to date, pivotal moments in your careers, no doubt. James, tell me about that. Like, what is the memory like for you now looking back on that time? Yeah, it was a long journey, uh, grinding like low mid stakes poker for a long time, building a bankroll, moving up in stakes and like, you know, finally climbing the uh, climbing the mountain and winning the trophy. It was incredible. And Dylan, how do you recall that time in your life? It's it was a pretty wild time for me. I had, uh, my wife and I just moved to Vegas um, and yeah, I, sort of like James, like I never, you know, I had a little bit of live success before that. Um, but the really big wins that just eluded me and to like make my first WPT final table and win it was, I mean, incredible. It didn't, it didn't feel real for quite a while. So Mosin, you have two WPT titles under your belt. The biggest, of course, was WPT Five Diamond in 2014. How do you look back at that time in your life now? Like I can still remember Mike and Vince like doing commentary while people were getting eliminated and like, at that moment, I think because that had been my like third or fourth major final table with like over a million dollars for first, I think at that moment I felt more like in the moment than I did in the other tournaments, but it was still a blur, but not much of it, not like entirely a blur. I don't know how to describe it, but I don't know. It just it was great. It was a lot of money and yeah. it's cool. And hearing Mike and Vince's voices there, it would have just made you feel like you were already on the TV show, right? Yeah, well, because the last, the first WPT I won, there was, it was a, it was televised, but this, in this one, there was like literally Mike and Vince just sitting like right behind you at the final table. Joe Hashem, let's reminisce. You won WPT Five Diamond at Bellagio in 2006. How do you look back on that time in your life? Validation. <clears throat> so much validation. Uh, like it was such a special time in poker you know between 05 and 08, 09 it was just and to be like the five diamond champion of 06 at the time on the back of the 05 victory WSOP it really holds a very special place in my heart yeah like the timing of it was just Beautiful. Like you said, it was validating. Mm. You know, you had just mm. blown onto the international circuit. This, <clears throat> this name from Australia, everyone knew. Mm. And then to back it up the very, very next year with the next most prestigious title on the tour, it was just, it was just, it was just mm. a fairy tale. You, <laughs> you couldn't write it. Uh, I, I take so much pride in that. Like, um, when I talk to someone outside of poker and I tell them what they do, they ask me if I know Joe Hashem. I get it all the time. Yeah. This is crazy. I know. It's crazy. You, I mean, I obviously, the, that time you created the poker boom in Australia, um, yeah. and 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 the poker uh, industry has just been booming since then. And we have your big wins to thank for that. So thanks, Joe. So Dan, looking back on your victory of the WPT Five Diamond back in two thousand and thirteen, how did that impact your life at the time? It was definitely, I would say, my biggest win at the time. Um, 2012 was like my breakout year. I went from the person who never won anything to the person who won everything. And 2013, I just totally got my butt kicked. So it was really nice to have a comeback and end 2013 on a, a strong note. My sister surprised me at the final table. She just showed up and was there. And it was just like a really beautiful thing that uh, she got to share that moment with us. Oh, absolutely. How much yeah. extra, how, it must make, 
I mean, winning a million dollars is is pretty epic, but getting to share it with loved ones it has to shift shift it somewhat for you. Describe the difference when you can share it with someone like that. I'm get, like thinking about it. I'm totally getting warm fuzzies. It's just uh, ex like shared experiences. I think are a huge thing amongst loved ones, and that memory was a really great one. And if I am remembering correctly, I go to hug my sister after the event and Lucky Chewy snipes in and gets the first hug. And even that is just such a great memory. Like Chewy was so happy for me that he just needed to do it right away. Um, yeah. Uh, and I guess just generally, poker is a very non-traditional career. So this sort of thing I think helped get me helped make it seem a little bit less crazy that I was doing the fact that I managed to continue to have success on a big stage. So whenever I think back to like big moments in my life, there are some memories that are around it that I just, my brain always seems to go to like a particular conversation or I don't know, like when you think of that time, apart from the actual final hand and having that big win, is there a standout memory you have of that week and, and that, that, that time in your life? Yeah. Uh, winning, winning massive flips. There were like four, four really massive flips or getting uh, a couple huge bluffs through. I remember like uh, 11 left versus Richard Seymour. I was all in on the turn. Uh, and I had the confidence to be talking to him while I was all in and somehow got him to fold a, a top pair, top kicker to like a half pot bet on all in on the turn. It was insane. And then, and then having a huge title like that behind you, uh, being a WPT champion, did that change things for you moving forward in your career? I think it was just like another example of performing well on the big stage. And when you have these wins under your belt, you're more likely to continue to perform well. Uh, and just, I think confidence is a huge impact on results. So while I don't think it had any, so I, I think both having the bigger bankroll and the confidence certainly didn't hurt. And as far as like memories go, it's probably one of my favorites. So your win actually was, uh, obviously it was a televised event and we made episodes out of it. Did you watch it back? And how many times do you think you've watched your episodes of your five diamond win? Uh, just last week, I was on YouTube and they were like, do you want to rewatch the highlights from the 2013 Doyle Brunson classic? <laughs> and I was just like, yes, I do. And so how's life for Daniel Smith now? Things are pretty wonderful. Um, I started a charity called Double Up Drive uh, very recently some moves were made where I am expecting some big growth this year. It's not quite at a point where we're like, we're prepared to announce anything, but I am really excited about the future. And just generally, I think it is really awesome how poker be like my favorite thing, even though it's inherently selfish, I was able to use this to make a, a big impact on the world. And that is super cool. And even, even though I don't love poker the same way that I did when I was younger, I still think it has like a great place in my life. And I am still trying to manage to keep, uh, I'm managing to have some poker in my life while not letting it take over my life entirely like I did in like 2012, for instance. Right, you found that balance. I, I'm trying. It's, it's fucking hard. <laughs> yeah, it changes every day. But what is it about WPT Bellagio that makes it like, you know, your favorite one to win? Um, the venue is probably the number one thing. I mean, those fountains. The first one I ever played was in that Fontana Lounge and you're just like, there's people taking like wedding photos in the middle of like tournaments outside and you just hear this like thunder from the fountains and you hear music and that stuff's pretty cool. Uh, 15 minute breaks where you can walk around the Bellagio and, and, and like 
It's kind of cool. Like it's well kept, decorated, like pretty cool casino. I mean, even when I have a place in Vegas, I actually just stay at the Bellagio because like the idea of like going up to my room on breaks or like coming down at like 11 and getting breakfast at the, the cafe, like it's just like the environment really is very conducive to having a good eight and a half hours of poker in you. Mm-hmm. Whereas like you just like, you just feel like, hey, like I got this. I have my like I'm well prepared for this eight and a half hours, and then I'm going to move on because of how great the venue is. 